It was a Thursday night when I first saw you Those green eyes caught me Yeah, it was crazy It was a Friday night when I first kissed you Good morning guys, hello and welcome back to my channel, I'm Danny. Um, I'm welcome back, I'm back, I'm back. Um, what can I say? I'm gonna try and upload the, firstly apologies for being so absent, there has been a lot going on. Um, I'm gonna, I did vlog the whole way through the time that I've been missing, so you would have last see me on Christmas Eve I believe. Um, I have vlogged everything since, um, so I'm gonna be putting out some catch up vlogs uh, back to the autumn when I started year three of uni. Um, so those are going up now. There's one that went up last night for the autumn. So do catch up. Thank you so much for your patience. As you guys know, I have a really um, complex set of health conditions and chronic illnesses um, that I've had since I was born, but they have decided to get much worse since I got COVID in March 2020. <sighs> um, so I've had constant infections since July last year. So trying to deal with that and basically the focus of my life had to become finishing uni um, and even then so close to the finish line to, to so close to not finishing and even now I'm not overly sure that I've done it um, I just wanted to have the self preservation and dignity of submitting my dissertation even if it is not very good which I don't think it is um, so what can I say it has been a strange and not very pleasant last six months really um we moved house in march we found out that we had two weeks notice um to move out of our forces accommodation and move somewhere completely different in hampshire um and that was really quite stressful so we have moved um we're now in winchester so which is somewhere we've always wanted to be but it was very stressful um and we have downsized for the moment so it's that was hard, losing my little garden and things. Um, and then it was just straight into uni work, really. So it has been incredibly busy. And then, of course, to help matters in June, I managed to get COVID for a second time. Yeah. So luckily this time, I was able. They were able to get me into hospital straight away and get me started on the monoclonal antibodies, um, which really, really helped prevent um, um, the sort. Of the bad episodes I had the first time and really helped prevent hopefully too much more damage but I have been incredibly sick in the last month with pneumonia and um, pyelonephritis so yeah um, anyway just wanted to catch you up so thank you so much to everybody that is still with me I realize the content's not been going up and that it's um, probably been very frustrating um, more so for me, I have been here and I've been wanting to do it, I just haven't had the energy or the time to do the vlogs and make up videos and then edit them and get them up and I've also had a bit of imposter syndrome, I've just found it really hard to be creative and everything else so, but anyway, moving forward, what is today? Today is Thursday the 18th of August, so about three weeks ago I did my exams on the 25th, 27th of um, March, so for those of you that are new here, hello and welcome, um, I'm Danny. I'm nearly 40, ah, I'm married to my lovely husband Mike, and I'm fur mummy to my little fur baby, fur mummy, no, I'm mummy to my little fur baby Tinky, yeah, um, we have been trying to conceive for 10 years now, without much luck because of infertility, so you'll see stuff like that on here, I used to be a makeup artist, um, and then uh, alongside being in the NHS for 17 years, in anaesthetics and other areas. Um, and then about three years ago, I um, was made redundant, medically retired as such from my role in the NHS due to ill health. And so I decided, what the hell, might as well do what I wanted to do when I was a teenager. And I went back to university at 36 to study medieval history at the University of Winchester. and. I was having an amazing time and then the pandemic hit um, and then since then it has just been flying by the seat of my pants and just incredibly hard with the chronic illness to get finished. Oh my god I've left my tea. Two seconds. Tea. All good. The struggle is real. Sure is. Um, so 
yeah, so I've been at University of Winchester for the last three years doing medieval history full time um, as a mature student, which is completely different to the last time I was at university doing um, theatre. <sighs> it's been an experience, but I've met some friends for life. I had the most amazing lecturers and I have loved every single minute of it. I wish I could go back and do it again, to be honest with you. Now things are a little easier. Um, so today is Thursday the 18th of August and it is results day. So about three weeks ago I did um, my exams for my depth study module which was Wars of the Roses and then my comparative module which was um, sh chivalry, uh, medieval chivalry, which was chivalry. Um, all assignments have been handed in. Um, I had to have so many extensions. Just thank you so much to everybody within the history department at Winchester and all of my lecturers for being so so patient with me and understanding um like i wouldn't have, literally wouldn't have been able to to do it without you so thank you very much um in that week i had the exams two one was three hours one was four hours um and of course we haven't sat handwritten exams throughout my whole degree because of COVID. We did exams online, they were open book. Um, so for a lot of my class it was really scary because they haven't done them before um, or since since GCSE I think a lot of them. I mean obviously I'm old school so all of my exams have been, I've never taken exams on online before so last year was more scary for me. Um, a lot of people found the handwriting element of exams this year a bit scary but that's literally how I write all my essays. I write them longhand and then type them up which don't even get me started, causes me all sorts of trouble, but yeah, old, oldie in the building. Um, so I did that, but we uh, have been having a really difficult time. So obviously I've been really poorly. Mike has had to go away for a bit. Um, so he's got a new job, so he's gone away, um, which is really upsetting because he's not here. He has been my biggest cheerleader since day one. He was the one that, you know, when I was coming home saying, okay, so I've been medically retired from my job. Um, we should probably start panicking now because, you know, we have essentially lost 35K. Um, <laughs> he didn't. He just said, everything's going to be fine. I think you're right to do this. You need to do something for you. And um, it's what you always want to do. And I think you're going to be amazing at it. And I think you need to find a new career. And even if you don't find a career out of it, I think you should do this for you. Um, my last university experience wasn't great because I was going through a period of being very, very poorly with my bronchiectasis. Um, and my heart problems at the time um, were just being diagnosed. So I was just, it was horrendous. And I think I effectively graduated with a third, really. Um, did graduate, but I graduated essentially. It's a different marking system, but I, I would say in, in current terms, it would either be, a, yeah, I think I got a third. But anyway, the point at the time was I graduated and um, went on to register with the Health Professions Council. And then um, I was very practical, very good at the practical side of the job. So I went on to be a very, very good ODP. Um, and I, that sounds very cocky, but I, I, I say that in terms of, I, I was good at it in that I really enjoyed the role and I, I think I was good at it. Um, yeah, I think I think I succeeded. Um, I, and I, I think because it was so practical based, I think I was, I think I was good at it. And the fact that it was, wasn't fully about the academic side was, was really good for me. Going into this course was so scary because it was so academic and always in the back of my mind, the idea that I had to write a dissertation. And I thought that's going to be my stumbling block because I'm dyslexic, I'm dyspraxic. <sighs> I can sit here and talk to you. If I could talk my dissertation to you, it would be a first probably because I, I can I can do my I can do that. Put it on paper, I struggle. I really struggle. Um and with the time frame it was so difficult. So Mike went away the week of my exams and unfortunately he's still away so he's going to miss the results which is just so hard because he's been my biggest supporter um him and my amazing family and my friends and you know my brother my sister-in-law 
um, Mike's family, just, you know, and obviously my twisted sister Jess and all the history girls at uni have just been so amazing and the lecturers themselves have just been, I can't recommend Winchester Uni if you're going enough, especially the history department. Um, so today is the culmination. So we did the exams. I had about one hour sleep before each exam. Um, I was so poorly um, and there was just so much other stuff going on at home and I got about one hour sleep um, and not very much revision got done because I was just so poorly. Um, but I, I can say hand on heart that I did do my best. So I'm hoping for more than a 50 today. I'm hoping it's not less than a 50 um, because I haven't got my dissertation marks back yet. I don't know where I stand. I'm really hoping that I haven't lost my 2-1. Now, if anybody's watching, please listen to me. When I say this, look, I got a third last time and I had a very successful career in the NHS. My brother got a 2-2 and he is now head of data and analytics for a very big firm, um, doing very well for himself and has went on to get his masters. So it, it, these grades do not define you. University does not define you, it's what you do after. It certainly helps if you wanna do a masters, but if you don't get the grades today, I promise you, you will be fine. It's just that for me, I started this journey wanting to improve on what I did last time and to, although I struggle with the dyslexia and the dyspraxia, I wanted to improve myself academically. I wanted to see that I could do it and put so much hard work into it. If I could just get my 2-1, this whole, I just feel upset now, but this whole journey has been, for me, it has been about about the course but it has been about not giving up in the face of adversity and it has always been the goal if I can just make it through this this uh, this episode if I can make it through this illness if I can get through this infection if I can get through this night next course of treatment if I can just make it to graduation if I can just make it to exams and then make it to, ex to graduation if I can just get that dissertation done everything will be okay like it's a silly thing in my head but I always have to have goals to get me through and it's been unbearably hard I've wanted to give up so many times <laughs> um, but I dug my heels in because it doesn't actually doesn't matter what I get today the fact that I've made it to the end that I didn't give in that I didn't say I'll repeat again next year I think I can be proud of that I think I can sit here and say you're never gonna be a first student you know the fact that I got first last year in second year just made my life I think from the kid that was literally told by her teachers in the late 80s, early 90s that, you know, who weren't sure what to make of a kid that had mild cerebral palsy and dyspraxia and dyslexia from brain hemorrhage from being born at 26 weeks, but was smart in other ways. They just didn't know what to make of me, you know, and it just, the help wasn't there. Um, and sort of like not knowing how to cope with my vision problems because of the, the brain hemorrhage. There just, there wasn't any help and they would write, you know, clever girl, intelligent in some ways, struggles intensely in other areas, um, will struggle going forward. That's one of the nicer ones. <laughs> like one of the not so nice ones was, um, will not go far in life. Um, I had another teacher tell me to my face and to my parents at parents evening that I was incredibly thick and could not be taught. <laughs> so I have always wanted to just prove that rot to be wrong because I don't believe that intelligence can be measured in just only one way. So, it's been incredibly hard, but I think the fact that I didn't give up says a lot. And I, it's been a really emotional journey, as you can see. Um, I certainly didn't expect to be sat here doing this results video on my own. I thought Mike could be here on my shoulder, like, you know. So it's really hard today that he's not here. Um, but he'll be on the end of the phone, so. And we'll celebrate when he gets back. 
Um, I just want to say congratulations to my friend in advance to Jess because you will have smashed it. Ellie, you will have smashed it. Kate, you will have smashed it. Everybody, you have all worked so hard and nobody in the, nobody has been through this before. Our class of 2022 can literally, and last year's class obviously, and next year's class, you know, we can all sit there in the future and say, when, when people ask us about our degree, they'll say, when did you, when did you graduate? And you say, class of 22. And they'll, they'll look at you and say, wow, tough one. And they will know that you are made of strong stuff because we made it through a global pandemic learning in our bedrooms with hardly any resources i mean i think at one point i couldn't get to the library and i had like two books for what you know for you know just it's been incredibly hard we haven't had the university experience we were promised we haven't been able to socialize we haven't been able to support each other we haven't been able to in terms of being face to face we haven't been able to have the fun side as well as the serious side but all I can say is from the people that I know from my class um, and at the university everybody on the history pathway and especially the medieval pathway the people that I know and love I just think just congratulations to you all and especially to my lovely friends just I think you're all amazing hello Tinky I think you're all amazing and you've done so well so I don't know what time the results are going to be released today hopefully not too far in the future because uh, my nerves are just insane um but I will film it and um you know there won't be any editing or lying or anything like that you know like it will be what it will be like hopefully more than a 50 I mean a 60 would a 60 and above would be really nice it's not going to be a 70 um I just hope it's not a 40 dissertation I really don't know I looked at it the other day there's some typos I was so rushed for time in the end and there was just so much going on I was literally sleep deprived on painkillers on oxygen nebulizers and I just my dissertations on Margaret Monju it was supposed to be a comparative study between Margaret Monju and Elizabeth Woodville but I ran out of time so Elizabeth I'm not finished with you yet I'm coming for you if I get to do a master's at some point um, but so I focused my study on Margaret Monju um, Henry the Sixth Queen, um, much maligned in history, um, and wanted to explore gendered reasons for her criticism, criticism of her and her queenship. So, those of you that know, like that's my area of focus. So, after three years, queenship has become my thing, um, thanks to a wonderful lecturer called Dr. Ellie Woodacre. She's got some lovely books out go and check them out if you're into medieval history and queens and queenship she is the best she's amazing and she's just inspired me alongside dr D alongside dr james ross so he sort of helped me with the kingship side of things which i'm also very interested in and of course my area of focus which is the wars of the roses oh, dr gabby story um oh dr cindy wood i i'm so blessed to have been at Wood uh, winchester like we have some of the best people that you can get, Dr. Rob Gray, Dr. Sean Edwards, just everybody, just, I've, ugh. Dr. Nick Kingswell, I've just had, uh, Dr. Simon Sandal, I've had the best teachers possible. And it's just made me so excited for the future, um, if this body will just cooperate a little bit. Um, so I don't know what's next is the answer. We'll get onto that in another video, but, just, I don't know about the dissertation is the answer. <sighs> I just really hope I haven't messed it up completely because I did really put so much into it. I really tried so hard considering. So I just, it won't be what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a first so bad. And it's not, I've read it, it's not. And that's really hard because, you know, a little bit more time and it could have been really good. If I get through today, I'm determined to improve on that, so I do apologise up front. It is going to be a really emotional vid couple of videos because it's just been so hard. Um, so I don't know about the dissertation or even when I'm going to get the dissertation marks, but today, as far as I know, I should get both exam grades back. So I'm going to drink my tea and try and distract myself by doing some more bits around the house. Um, so yes, this is our new apartment. 
Um, I will do a tour, I promise. Um, we moved in in March from our little merry quarter and anybody who has ever marched out of merry quarters oh my god you will know especially right now with the new company hey um you will know my feelings about that um and then again that's another video completely about the process of leaving the armed forces after being in for so long it's wow that was an experience um so it's a lovely little apartment um it's a little small not gonna lie but it is new, it's brand new, and it is so nice compared to, it's nice to have new things compared to being at old Mara quarters. So there, there's ups and, ups and downs, um, but I'm hoping to be able to create a little filming spot. Um, I do have some ideas for makeup coming up soon. I have changed my Instagram, I will pop this up soon, but I have changed my Instagram. So obviously I'm not able to do my makeup uh, business at, at the minute um, throughout the whole of the last time I did a job was January 2020 um, because I've been shielding so um, and really I'm still basically shield, shielding really other than I have a group of 10 people in my bubble that I'm allowed to see really I have to still be very careful so <sighs> Daniela Logan makeup is no more for the minute unfortunately um, so it's just be putting makeup on Daniela <laughs> or Danny god I hate my name um and maybe my friends if they will let me but so we're gonna have to come up with some some ways around this um so yeah so I have renamed my makeup account chronically underscore breathless MUA because I am at the minute that is me so it's a very upfront account of chronic illness day-to-day -day life um, TTC journey, infertility, um, university as a mature student and lots and lots of skincare and makeup. Um, so I do hope that you'll still join me on my journey and um, I'm on Twitter, uh, no, no, TikTok, I joined TikTok, don't know how to do it. Uh, yeah, it's not a thing for my generation, like no, I, need, I literally need somebody to give me a lesson on how to do it. So I'm trying, if you, if, if, if you follow me on there, don't expect too much, <laughs> literally don't hate me for it. I'm trying, I'm trying to get my head around it. So yeah, um, and that's Chronically Breathless MUA on there as well. So I will see you in a, in a, in a bit with some results, I hope. Good morning everybody, it's Friday the 19th of August, so oh my god, what a debacle. So yesterday I thought my exam results were supposed to be released and dissertation results. Got to the afternoon, I thought, mm, they're not here, nobody else had got theirs, so I emailed the university and they were like, no, they're not meant to be released till the 1st of September. I was like, the 1st of September? I can't wait that long, seriously. <laughs> um, and then we got a confusing message saying they might be today, which was tomorrow, yesterday, if you see what I mean. Um, so, I have no idea if they're gonna be released today, so. Just another day. Start with a cup of tea. <laughs> and just another day of anxiety and waiting, just, oh God, I just need this to be over. So, I will come back to you if I get them through. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh yeah, it's, it's like half nine and <laughs> I've been in the shower and getting ready and I haven't, my phone was on charge, so just in case, and I've come back to my phone, and I've come back to my phone and my exam results and my dissertation grades have been posted. I literally can't bring myself to look, oh my god. Oh, well done, well done. Okay, let's just get this over and done with and have a look. I just need to log on to Canvas. I'm just logging on to Canvas now. I don't actually think I could do it. Now would be about the right time to start saying some Hail Marys, wouldn't it? <sighs> I am very full of grace that I've done with the English room. Oh, oh, man. oh man, please, please, please just let me have passed, please. <sighs> I 
Okay, depth study Wars of the Roses. Okay, here goes. Wait, where is it? I can't look, I can't look. This one was such a hard exam, like, the Wars of the Roses is such an expansive period of time, like, it's not easy. Oh my god. Right, okay. Here he goes. Question 160, question, question 1A60, question 1F63, question 1G64, which totals out, uh, so and then there's question 866, question 963, totaling it at 64. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. You, everybody that knows me will laugh because like 64 has been my number for this year. It's been literally been when where I'm at, but like I will take that happily. Which means I'm totally done crap on chivalry, obviously. Do not get any actual feedback. I am really surprised on the gobbits because I really thought that I'd overwritten on those. I mean, clearly I've done better on the on one of the gobbits I did. Two of the gobbits I did well. One I got a 60, one I got a 63, one I got a 64. Of course, so question, I need to go back and look at the questions. Question eight, I got a 66. And question nine, I got a 63. So question eight, whatever that was, I did better. However, I will take that happily. I know it's in the 64 zone. I'm back in the 64 zone, but I will take that happily. Thank you very much. <sighs> Take a minute, take a minute to let that, that one sink in and then onto chivalry. Have you looked at any yet? Look at one. Just oh my god, that's amazing! You did so well, I'm so proud of you. It was so good. Oh, well done. I'm so surprised at that because I really thought that I did me and over overwrote for everything. I wrote so much, I had to ask for extra paper. I mean Like, to be fair, the gobbits were easier than the one he gave us at Christmas, which I screwed up. But we didn't really do much practice, but I do think our little study day really helped a lot. Us running through it together, especially the bit on Cade's Rebellion, because I clearly threw that in at some point. Oh, thank God he put in a question on Queenship. Told you all that dissertation reading would help you. I know, but like, that means I'm going to have totally screwed up chivalry and... And my dissertation, doesn't it? Do you know what? <laughs> I literally can't look. Like. <laughs> if it could just be over 60 on both bits, I would just be there. I mean, to be fair, I really screwed up because I, I spent so much time doing the planning. I took half an hour to do the planning in pencil at the beginning, literally. Um, quite, actually, I think it was closer to 45 minutes and then crossed it out, obviously. But I put all my points down of what I wanted to, to write about and I, I would go and write it in the exam and then go back and tick it off the plan to make sure I didn't forget anything and make sure I did it in the order I wanted to do it in so that it made sense. So. Being able to do that really helped, I think, for me. 
I don't think you can really sort of overwrite in an exam. So he did so good, so impressed. And that means that because your essays and your exam was 64, it means that your modules for both parts of Wars of the Roses are 64. Right, are we going to do chivalry then? Had to explain this bit, so <laughs> me and my best friend Jessa, obviously, I'm on my own today because Mike, Mike can't be here today, so it feels really strange because normally he'd be like, here, yay! So I'm just feeling really emotional. Um, but yeah, so we're both getting our, me and Jess are both getting our exam results at the same time, so. Okay, I'm gonna be brave and look at chivalry. Come on, let's do it together, let's do it together. Right, are you ready? Okay, <sighs> had a little panic. <laughs> now on to um, my chivalry exam. <sighs> time to start saying those Hail Marys. I just scraped it, but question 262, question 460, which averages out at 61. <laughs> Actually, over the moon with that one because I really thought I failed that one. <laughs> 61, I will take that. <laughs> okay, so anyone have to go as dissertation? So just a station now standing between me and getting my degree. <laughs> All right, I'm going. Sixty-one. Sixty-one. So I got question two sixty-two and question four sixty. on my chivalry exam just about Jesus Christ I really thought I'd failed that one so bad and that's Nick marking so that's really not bad and although I knew a little bit and threw in a little bit about the Arthurian stuff and you know some I, I didn't know as much about historians and dates for chivalry as I did for Walls of the Roses so <sighs> I am over the moon with those two exam grades. Like, I had, especially chivalry, I had one hour's sleep. I was so ill. My brain was literally fried and I'd done, with being poorly in hospital, COVID and everything, all in all, I think I did about four days revision. Um, and even, we were revising me and Jess, all morning up until the exam um, and here's the here's the thing I didn't make it to any of my chivalry classes so to get a 2-1 for the exam when I couldn't go to any of the classes and unlike last year where I was able to log in online and participate online this year they came up with some silly rule saying I had to be present um, even though I was still effectively shielding in the autumn and um, obviously in and out of hospital and had pretty much had pneumonia or pyelonephritis or both from January onwards so the class started in semester two and I wasn't able to attend any of the lessons at all I had to give my presentation online I had to get extensions for my set for my assignment so essentially I had to teach myself um, and luckily my amazing lecturer put all my lectures and slides, uh, he put the recorded sessions for seminars and lectures online for me to catch up with, which I did try to do. And obviously I always buy all the books um, and I used to take the books with me to hospital and while I was at home. So um, Wars of the Roses, I think what helped the most was um, the fact that my dissertation was very much Wars of the Roses. So I think that Although I get, again probably did about two weeks worth of revision for Wars of the Roses exam, um, I had a lot of background knowledge. But I mean, Wars of the Roses is an expansive period. We did the first phase, the later phase. Um, luckily, there was a question on queenship, which I just opened the paper and I remember being like, Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ross. 
literally, literally, like, thank you. Like, um, but there was also one on Cage Rebellion, um, which I'd literally just been revising the night before, so I just got lucky, I think. Um, but I think I did have much more knowledge for that. Um, and I think I did okay on chivalry because it is very core medieval knowledge, which I've been doing all this time. I have chosen to take really core medieval modules. There were ones in early modern on queenship that I really wanted to take, but I thought it would be better to keep my... I only did one early modern module, really, two, actually. Um, but the rest of them were really consistently... So I did medieval hostageship, um, early medieval Britain. Um, just most of my modules were medieval-based. Um, and I think that really helped with chivalry. So I still need to look at my dissertation. I'm ignoring it, aren't I? Um, I'm not ignoring it. I'm just... <laughs> stalling for time because I really don't want to see the mark because dissertation is just different to exams like there's so much invested in that I, I have put my heart and soul into it this is a project I have a passion for since I started uni and discovered queenship and I, I kind of knew where I wanted to go and it all went wrong and I wanted to, to my initial project was obviously to do a comparative study on the gendered criticism received for the queen, uh, on the queenship of Margaret of Anjou and Elizabeth Woodville, so you're comparing them during the two queens of the Wars of the Roses. Um, however, being really poorly and getting COVID, I ran out of time. I couldn't go to the archives, so that made it very difficult. There is more written on Elizabeth, on Margaret, than there is on Elizabeth, um, which is fine. I could have mentioned that in the dissertation and said it, it will be unbalanced. However, the time to do the research slipped away from me. Um, and it wouldn't have been a good study. Um, and I'd started off doing more on Margaret and it just it kind of just went that way. In the future, I'm gonna do that comparison, I promise. But um, I, I just said to my lecturer, you know, to my um, supervisor, I have loads on Margaret, but I don't have enough on, on Elizabeth. Can I change it? And he said, yes, at the very, at the 11th hour, he said, if you have enough, do it. So thankfully, he just, oh, I can't thank him enough for his support. Um, so I, I changed it to just um, a comparative study on the gendered criticism of Margaret of Anjou. So, oh gosh, what's all done? Um, so it's it definitely wasn't what I want it to be. Um, I ran out of time. Um, I was incredibly poorly the day that it was the day and the day before it was due. Um, we had the paramedics out. I was literally on oxygen, um, painkillers. And reading it since, I can see that painkiller brain, a lot of the words are, my dyslexia is huge, um, much more than it normally is, which is clearly brought on by the painkillers and the, 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 trying to write a dissertation when you have a massive infection is not easy and lack of oxygen, my sats were really, really low. So I can see that it's not my best writing, which is really upsetting for me because I really wanted it to be so good you know when you put your heart and soul into a project for so long and at the end you just run out of time and you just the word limit like I write for Britain literally so trying to get it into everyone else was struggling to get 8,000 words I was trying to I, I started off when I was cutting it down at 22,000 words so I had a master's thesis um I needed to cut it down to to I got it down to just over 10,000 so or just under 11 I think actually so I'm just I'm just so scared to look because it means so much to me but at the end of the day if I can get my 2-1 and graduate then I will give it another shot at masters and do it justice I promise I'll take that that's fine with me well done but we both got two ones we've done it okay now I am literally oh, I can't look at my dissertation I just can't believe that I passed chivalry, you know, one hour's sleep and I literally went to none of the lessons and none of the seminars. So I will take a 61 gladly. Clearly it sounds like your thing, you did so well. Okay, so that is the exam results done. So now it is time to look at my dissertation grades because they're there as well. This one is the big one. This one means so much. Um, okay. 
Okay, time to rip off the band-aid and just look at the gestation results because they're here as well, so. Okay. Gestation. I did it. Just about 61. <laughs> showing good understanding of enthusiasm for the topic and you've done lots of research successfully integrating primary and secondary material throughout <laughs> see lots to improve on <laughs> there is good material throughout and you've done a great job simply to submit a dissertation in circumstances let alone a good one well done done. I didn't do the best I could do but I didn't fail and I didn't give in and now it's done. I did it. So just have to wait for the board but uni degree finished 